and welcome to my channel the purpose of today's video is to make one good parkside battery from these two i've already marked what's wrong with them there's six bad cells in this one and four bad cells in that one or if you're more optimistic there's four good cells in that one and six good cells in that one which adds up to 10 good cells so that's what we're going to do we're going to amalgamate them all demonstrate the non-functionality of these batteries i'm going to use the parkside drill which can display that quite well i'm going to do a quick volt check in these just um to check what's coming out the top so if these batteries were good you would get 17 between 17 and 20 coming out the top them's the rules 10.9 very low which you would expect saying that the cells are bad and 6.8 so between the two of them you have a battery that will probably charge you know what i do now is open these two batteries they have these little hexagon screws in the bottom of them and show you what is actually wrong here what cells are bad Oh, that's bad. Look at that air. It's a bit of corrosion there. That doesn't want to come out. It doesn't come out much easier. I'll have to pry that night. There's a lot of corrosion in there. But, it might not be the end of the world. Doing a little volt check now. As you can remember, there's four good cells in this which are here what do you see these two here in the side i'll put it upside down so you can see better these two are good we'll go from positive to negative there these two these two and the rest are trash so we'll mark the bad ones with a marker with the x marks the bad cell and we'll go here and these ones let's just say the multimeter again um dead good but lower but good eye uh, good eh? that's four that's six good cells and yeah bad in the end so the end ones are bad these two end ones and these two end ones are bad the three middle banks even though they look bad they're all right so we're probably going to remove them four and probably going to take these four out and put them on either side so we're going to remove the four bad ones from this pack first i'm going to use my little flesh cutters to get them out so moving on to the the one with the better cells move the battery indicator there so we're moving these four here so we'll probably just do a single cut there and make it neater i'd say let's do a single cut try and pull, pull them four out together and just uh slicer there and probably a slicer there hold that strap up we might reuse that we'll see how we go and cut that preserving some of the original material for reasons that I'll show you later and hopefully we can slide all that out so the rest of that pack is for yeah 
They're all, it's all bad now. So these are the good cells. This is the other good pack. So we just got to get these in. Um, there is an issue, however, before we refit these. I don't know if you noticed it earlier on, but these cells are not all the same voltage. These ones have to go to this pack are 3.52. Yep, and these are 3.83. Is that in a bit lower in the middle? That's a problem too. If it is, it is a problem. 3.74, that's a problem as well. To get a balanced pack, we need we need them all the same voltage. 3.83 and 3.74. So that's going to take a wee bit of... Yeah. I may have to charge these up a little bit. I'm thinking in the best way to do it. Believe it or not, scissors might be a better job for this. A good strong pair of scissors is your best friend with these these old nickel strips sometimes. Just separate these all out. And I can charge them up on my single cell charger. Absolute beast. This is my XTAR VC8 Plus cell charger. What it does is it'll charge the individual lithium cells for you and it'll show you the resistance, show you how healthy they are as well. So it's pretty good in that line. And I can uh, put a link in the description to show you what. Um, where to buy this lovely device so what one to do is bring them up to 3.83 and probably need to bring this pack this bank up to 3.83 as well but if we can do that by another means we can use another device that i have i'll leave that to the side for now max b6 light pro balance charger what we're doing is we're just going to go 1s we're charging one bank of cells so we need to connect to that bank of cells now. This middle bank we're connecting to, I'm going to use a couple of magnets. And this is the positive side and this is the negative side. So we're clicking onto the positive there. Hold on. That's the positive. It gets confusing, but you got to get this right. you got to get it right. And we'll... Set the charger. And start bringing that up there now. You see it's gone up in voltage. That should go up fairly quickly. It is going up fairly quickly. Yeah, good. I might have charged it. I'm going to stop her here. Because I think I've done something wrong here. I'm going to show you what it is. I'm charging it too quick. I'll put down the amperage maybe to 2 amps. It would be more reasonable. Sometimes they do charge them too quick to, um, because of time constraints. But we'll do it right. There we are. Two amps is a more sensible rate to charge them at. You can see that. It's coming up nicely. The boring part of the procedure, so we just have to monitor that there to see how that does. We also have to monitor this here. And that comes up to about 4 volts, so I would say that'll be near enough. So that's not telling you what's on them, that's telling you what it's putting on. It's always putting on more than the cells have themselves, if that makes any sense. I'm going to stop the charger now. It's got to about 4 on the charger, and it means it's putting about 4 on. So that's our stop now. And we'll check what is actually going through, coming out of these mega cells now. 3.85, so near enough. So we'll call that part 8 fixed anyway. Now we wait further for this to come up, these all to come up. As you can see, it's showing the internal resistance. And this one's 42. This is the worst cell of the lot, but you know, they're okay for a, for a DIY budget fix like this, they'll do rightly, you know. We can do a wee bit of clean up on these. And 
prep them for the main event. Incorporate my uh, battery spot welder here now to the to repair. Very important device for battery repair. This. This new nickel strip on there on that side. I will need to put a button on here too. And the last one here, just here. That's the battery prepared for the for the cells. We're still waiting for them to charge right enough, but yeah. Just be a matter of zapping them in and that'll be all good. These have come up to where we want them to roughly. So we'll just take them off and see what they're reading. Right, these four cells fully charged now are charged to 3.8 uh, 3.83 there 3.82 and 3.80 and yeah so they're near enough they'll do the job. What I'm going to do now is remove the old nickel from these batteries. I did keep a bit on but since then I uh, have adopted a different strategy I have thought I'll, I'll go a different way with it you know these flush cutters are absolutely ideal for this give you such a clean finish just slide these on now and maybe get the repair finished for you There's a bit of damage to this one, so I'm going to just insulate it a little bit. Put the insulator in there. A bit of damage to the protective cover, so yeah, we'll just insulate. London doesn't need it, but we'll put one in there as well. Keep it safer. Oh, that's a good sign. So we'll put this together and see if we have a good job. At the moment of truth, we'll try it in the charger. And it's charging. And we will try it in the drill. 
I'm calling that fixed, so if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and check out my channel for all my other videos. No bad sales now.